Welcome to uh, Chapter 8, Membrane Structure and Function. This will cover the uh, plasma membrane and how important it is in the cell. Remember, this all connects to the macromolecules, and if we don't have the macromolecules, a lot of these things will not occur. So a couple of little interesting ideas about the plasma membrane. Uh, first off, it's 8 nanometers thick, so if you remember back to uh, nanometers, that would be times 10 to the negative ninth. Uh, selective permeable, meaning that Permeable means it's allowed for it to go through, but um, it's selectively. So only, uh, most of the time, remember this permeable member means only certain things go through. And so most of the time it's going to be uh, small objects, um, those like very small molecules, um, things like water, those kind of things will go through. But large ones, uh, like, you know, uh, large ideas like a glucose, and uh, proteins and large ideas like that are going to need a protein uh, channel. So it's selectively, uh, so only small items, um, small molecules, those kind of things will go through. Large items like, like glucose will not go through. It's also made of phospholipid and protein. Uh, phospholipid is the main structure component. I'll show you a picture here in a second about that. And then finally, the protein, like I said earlier, uh, allows for things like channels um, for. Uh, to be able to be recognized as well as other ideas. Um, there are there are also uh, parts in there that are carbohydrates. Carbohydrates are mostly used there as, as flags to know like what kind of cell it is. Um, and then the amphipathic molecule means that there are both hydrophilic as well as hydrophobic regions. So um, that, again, remember that the hydrophilic will actually allow for the water, you know, it has a water affinity. And the hydrophobic regions will not allow for water to pass through. And and, and, and again, the cell membrane, the plasma membrane, is uh, if if here's your cell membrane, right here it's double layer, and here's and this is like within the cell. Okay. So it's within the cell, and we want to get through. Remember, the, it only selective things can get through, and then also only certain areas. So most of the time, it's very hydrophobic. Right here, it's very hydrophobic, and right here, it's very hydrophobic. Or, sorry, it's very hydrophilic. But because this inside is hydrophilic, sorry, hydrophobic, then uh, it will not allow a whole lot of ideas to go through. So, a real quick picture for you. Here's what the basic cell membrane goes through. Like I was talking, uh, I was telling, saying earlier, um, most of them is right here. This this phospholipid. This is that little uh, that head with the tail and the hydrophobic tail and the hydrophilic head. It's that phospholipid layer. Um, and so there are two. That's, that's because that's why it's called a bilipid. There are two of these. And and again, we have our our regions that are hydrophobic. And then the heads are hydrophilic, so they they go together like this. And you notice there's these, these purple. These purples are proteins, and the proteins are there for um, things, for uh, you know either for channels or for marks. Uh, you can also use them as attachment pieces. And then there's also very small, like I said, these little tags. Not a whole lot of carbs, but every so often you will find some carbohydrates sticking out there as tags. Um, you need to know this picture. Okay, you need to be able to, if I give you this picture, you need to be able to label. You need to be able to label the proteins, the phospholipid bilayer, um, even things right here. This is the uh, myofilaments, and it's a, a cytoskeleton. So a skeleton, like in your body, is there for structure and support. It's the same thing here. Uh, so, again, and this would be the cytoplasm, and we'll talk cytoplasm later. But anyways, that's the inside of the cell, and then out here is the outside of the cell, or the fluid area. So again, uh, I will post this photo um, up online, but you need to be able to take this photo and, and name each of these parts. So uh, if you, you could pause the video right now and, and kind of look through it and see what you know. So one of the theories on um, on uh, the cell membrane. Is this idea of the, the fluid mosaic model, and, and here's two different concepts. Um, right now, we we talk about how the fluid mosaic model is is this model over here. The current fluid mosaic model 
goes away from the uh, Davis Donnelly model. Um, and mostly the idea that instead of proteins actually being a layer on top of the phospholipid bilayers, it's actually input into the phospholipid bilayer. So again, like I said, it's those proteins are actually stuck within the phospholipid bilayer and not actually on top or below. It's actually right in the middle of it all. Here are the different types of proteins. There, there's mainly two different types, so the peripheral and the integral. Uh, the peripheral, peripheral means on the outside, and so peripheral proteins are going to be on the outside, whereas integral are going to be on the inside. So here is a, a list of, of the different functions over here. Um, and so as you can see, there's many different functions for the proteins. There's uh, the markers, and the markers would basically be there to kind of show you, okay, this is that cell. If, if you're looking, um, if you're in, in uh, some kind of, um, say, uh, some kind of protein or you are something that needs to go into the cell, the markers are there to basically find that cell. And also really, you know, if, if you're a skin cell, you need to know where the other skin cells are, um, and you're not, you're, not, you're not talking to, say, the muscle cells, unless you are one of those. Um, again, it could also be a receptor if you're receiving um, items through the cells like uh, sodium or, or calcium or something like that. And then also for that sodium or calcium or anything of those interests, it can also be used as a channel. A channel is there to allow for, most of the time, for um, diffusion against the gradient. And we'll talk diffusion here in just a sec. So again, these are the main types or the functions of the proteins. There's lots of different functions. And then there's two main types, the peripheral meaning on the outside, the integral meaning actually within the cell itself, or within the phospholipid bilayer. Now, when you talk about the cell, it's all about transferring, and transporting um, uh, items back and forth throughout the cell. Uh, so diffusion is, is passive transport, all these are passive transport, but diffusion is just going from high to low, areas of concentration. Uh, osmosis is the same, it's just the difference is that osmosis deals specifically with water. So again, diffusion is all, but osmosis is used when you talk about going from a high level to a low level of water. It's the same thing. And, and, and the easiest way to think about it is this. Let's say we have a box, and then that box there is some water. And we want that box to then go into this other box. Well, very easily, we can say that because of gravity, it's going to diffuse or it's going to send down to the lower section because, again, it has a high concentration here and a low concentration here. If this was water, we would use the term to osmosis. Um, but if we, it's something other than that, like gas or something of, of non-water type, we use the term uh, diffusion. Osmotic pressure is, is a determination um, by how much water, uh, water pressure basically it has um, we'll do that, and that's what a part of that whole diffusion osmosis lab that we have coming up uh, will be about is osmotic pressure. Hypertonic and hypotonic. Um, let me get you a, a fresh screen, I'll show you what that means. So, hypotonic. So, let's say we have this cell. Okay, there's a cell. And this cell is, um, let's say, 90% water. Well, we put that cell into a, a section of water. Now this is salt water, so it is 15% salt. Now, what does that mean? Well, that means that it's actually 15% salt, so that means that it is 80% water. And earlier I said this is 90% water cell, so since it's 90 here, 80 there, well that's high to low, so the water is actually going to go out. So we would say that this is a this cell is within a hypotonic solution. Sorry, hyperton hypotonic solution. So again, it's in a hypotonic solution. It means that the water is actually going to go out. Now, let's say we reverse that. Let's say we have this cell. This is a saltwater fish cell. And the saltwater fish cell is, say, 75% water. And then we put that into a, a the saltwater fish into a, a freshwater lake. And the freshwater lake is, let's say, 95% water. Well, what's going to happen is that all the water is going to start coming in. And I didn't use this earlier, but um, if, if all the water is starting to come in, this cell will actually start getting bigger and bigger and bigger. And it just will come to what's called turgid. 
that's T-U-R-G-I-D, turgid. And so basically what happens is this cell will actually start to get fatter and fatter. And eventually, if it gets so fat, all this water is just going in there. It gets so fat, eventually, actually, the, the cell itself will start to rupture. The, it'll, it'll crack out, and all these, this membrane will actually break. So it's called turgid. Whereas on the other one, if the water was going out, it would actually get, uh, start to shrink. So water going in causes turgidity, turgidity and then uh, water coming out would actually cause a shrinkage of the cell. So that would be hypertonic. Um, and then isotonic just basically means this, that if you have a cell, let's say it's 90% water, and it goes into water that is 90% of the water, the same, the, the net transfer, or the, the amount of transfer is exactly the same in as out. So there's no change in size. And then um, the, the facilitated diffusion, again, that, that, that's um, where if you have the cell, so here's your cell membrane. Along the cell membrane, you will have these channel proteins. So here's a channel protein. And the facilitated fusion will actually, the, they will use a channel protein to actually pull in, say, some kind of molecule. Say, if this, if this yellow dot needs to come into the cell, it'll actually have to go through the, pro, the channel to actually go and pull it through. Uh, things like, uh, if, if, you, if your facilitated infusion is actually a, a, an effect of it, if you don't have um, this facilitated infusion that's not working correctly, you can't get cysteine. Now, if you can't get enough cysteine, you go through something called cystinuria, and cystinuria is a side effect of having bad setup of this facilitated fusion. So, um, this is a very important process, but again, it, it's not technically passive transport. It, uh, it's going from a high to low, but it allows larger molecules. So, if this is cysteine. This is a pretty big molecule. It's a passive transport, but it's a passive transport that needs a helper. And that helper normally comes from a, uh, a protein stuck on the outside of the cell wall, or outside the cell membrane. And then finally, the, the gated channels. Um, it's a lot like facilitated diffusion, and if you go back a slide over here, um, that is what this picture is actually talking about, right? There it go. Uh, here it is. Oh. Anyways, it's kind of like this, this picture right here. Basically what happens is that a this sodium will actually come in, attached to the outside wall. That outside wall will then open up because the sodium's in there, allows for the potassium to pass through, and then the moment the potassium is, is able, is, is, as full as it's going to be, the sodium actually releases and uh, it closes the gate. It's kind of like if you're in an apartment and you have a little key card, you, you put your key card in the gate, the gate opens up, you pull your key card out, the gate closes down. So again, that's just it's called um, it's called a, a a gated channel, and again it uses ATP, but there's that's what that says. Um, so if you want to kind of review, here's some examples of each of them. This one, uh, this one right here, this would be diffusion. This one right here would be specifically osmosis. This one right here is known as a gated channel. Here is a facilitated diffusion, and here is a, here's another example of facilitated diffusion. Again, those are all kind of examples, those are all pictures I pulled from the book, so you can look that up in the book. Now, this is what I was talking about right here, as far as, well, what happens if you're hypertonic or hypotonic? Um, well, let's say that you live and, and not, so this is what I was talking about right here. This this cell right here got into a solution where it had more water on the outside than on the inside. All the water went in, and it actually went through what's called plasmosis. It was originally turgid, which is good, but then it goes through plasmosis, which actually is a, a rupture of it. Um, this would be a, an isotonic solution. Okay, iso meaning the same, and then this, again, would be a... a when it starts to shrink, because again, all the water is actually going out of the cell. 
Um, what this is showing you is this is actually a paramecium. If you look really closely, this is what their vacuole looks like. And paramecium's, if you put into salt water, they're originally fresh water. Um, I believe they're produce. And you put them into salt water, all that that water will actually start coming in. And the problem is that it'll start going, and it might even rupture, like this picture is talking about right here. And the paramecium is a single cell organism, so it can't do that. So what it actually does, it has something called a contractual vacuole. And the contractual vacuole is basically a way for the uh, paramecium to push every um, any extra water outside of itself. And a lot of uh, animals have this, um, especially those that are in the, the salt water area, so they can um, pull in or push out any kind of extra salts that they have. So now this idea right here is this active transport and so the difference between active and passive is that active just like how if you are active you're going to use energy and in for in biology or for in science or yeah, in biology and as a body you use ATP for active transport there's two main different there's two different types there's exo exo meaning out so if you are um, if your pancreas is producing insulin you're going to have to go through exocytosis to uh, release that, that insulin. Um, and so basically what it's going to do is it's actually going to create a vacuole on the inside of the cell. So here's your cell. It's actually going to open up a certain section of the cell and it's going to push that insulin out. Whereas endocytosis, that means it's going in, and again does use ATP, um, it's actually pulling... Uh, items in and that's what this these pictures this series of pictures are showing you. Um, so phagocytosis basically means something that is large. So phagocytosis normally brings in kind of any kind of solid type of food. Uh, pinocytosis would then be using a liquid. Um, and then another way they use endocytosis is through receptor media. So if you look right here in this this picture, you notice that there's a there's a receptor, probably a carbohydrate receptor or a protein receptor. Um, and and it locks onto anything that's this triangular form. That triangular form then allows for this opening, what's called a, a, a coated pit. And that coated pit is, then is layered with proteins that then starts to pinch off and it releases down to here. So that's what a, what's called a receptor mediated channel. Um, it creates a coated pit and that coated that coating is actually a protein. So again, exo meaning out and endo meaning in. And all of these again have to use ATP. So that's the quick and, and fast way of um, the plasma membrane. Um, you need to know the plasma membrane so that way when we get to the cells, you understand how all that works out. Um, so I hope that helps. And remember, make sure you post your comments down below and. Uh, Anything you have questions over, make sure you ask me in class or you can always email me. So I hope this learns and uh, I will see you in class.